I need a Human Rights Commission agenda. Whoa, what is this? Hi, Donna Ray. Hi, Jennifer. How are you? Good. I, I was calling you at the end of the day. Um, I wanted to tell you something, but I don't think it was very important because I can't remember what it was. But I do remember calling you and saying, oh, I wonder if I'll catch her. But um, um, anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. Hi, Deb. How are you? Look, I put Deb in there today instead of Deborah. Oh, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm well. How are you doing, Jennifer? I am well. And now, you know, I've attended so many Zoom things that I know how to rename myself with my pronouns. Like, this is like easy now. <laughs> yeah. How do I, and so, so tell me, how do you do that? Oh gosh. Okay. So if you go, if you put your um, mouse thing on your box, yep. there's a blue bar that says mute. And then there's a box that has three um, dots. Oh, I see it. And you can say rename. So click on that box and yeah. then, yep, rename. And then you can type in whatever you want. Nice. That's great. Thanks for that tip. I, yeah. No, I'm just passing it along. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. But that's the way to do it, right? You learn something new and you pass it along. That's it. <laughs> so I just got out of the first community safety working group meeting, which was like, oh, oh how exciting. Yeah. How was it? Yeah. It, you know, it was actually just a lot of bureaucratic issues, like who's going to chair, who's going to be the vice chair, how do we proceed, who's going to be the person of contact. Um, but it's a good group of people. And so they're going to, you know, I, they're going to, it looks like we'll be able to plow through, you know, meet the deadlines that are required right now. That's great. Yeah. That's so great. I was just in another meeting. Um, the JCA hosted a talk with Bill Newman, who is the Western Mass AC lawyer for, from the ACLU. And, um, oh my God, I'm having a brain cramp. Um, Tara, something from Pioneer Valley Project in Springfield. And it was a um, great discussion on policing and incarceration. And they oh, have cool. like this list of questions that they can just lend to anybody who wants to go and have sit down and have conversations with their police departments about, you know, you know, police who have been, you know, written up, who have been, you know, you know, just like soliciting data from your um, local police. Um, it was a great discussion. And I'm like brain dead at this point. <laughs> That's the, that's the thing about the night meeting. Sometimes you're like, I gave it all away during the day. I don't have much left. I'm telling you. <laughs> So, um, Erica, you are enlisted in as an attendee and a panelist. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Let's see if I can promote to panelist. You should already be. But, okay, perfect. Hi, 
How did there get to be so many meetings in Amherst on Thursday night? They were going to put the community safety working group meeting on Thursdays, which I couldn't have objected to, but I was like, please don't. <laughs> please don't, because I have HRC. <laughs> well, yeah, what would you have done? That's in And then the district meetings, too. Yeah. Right. Hi, Hi, Erica. Hi. <laughs> How are you today? I'm good. Everybody good? We are all well. Yeah. Um, Sid just sent out an email saying, hi all, running behind, we'll be there in 10 minutes. I think that's okay if Matthew's um, coming so he can, uh, I didn't hear back that Matthew wasn't coming so he can get the meeting started. Yeah. Ben. Hello. Hi, Ben. Hi. Oh, that's so funny, Erica. I just got Sid's email now. Yeah, there it is. What? Oh, I think that's fine. Oh, sorry. Cedric, well, you looked like you were in snow for a minute. I was a little concerned, <laughs> like, what? We're we waiting for Liz and um, and Sid said he would be late, correct? Oh, and Petua. All right, so Matthew's having difficulty signing in and out. Are you there, Matthew? I can hear you. We can hear you. Okay. Um, yeah. But but I, I've got a 
connecting window that is just uh, the circle keeps going. Oh. So I can't see you. Oh, did you want to hop back in it, hop out and then come back in? Or did you? Yeah, I'm going to. Yeah, I'm going to try that one more time and see if, if that works. Uh, I'll be with you again in one minute. Great. And so our, our um, presenters from the League of Women Voter are here and the attendees. Perpetua is in under. Hello, I think. Hi, Perpetua. Am I an attendee? Should I rejoin as a? Well, I, um, you're you're listed in both, but I think just give me one second. Okay. And then you should be all set now. Okay. Sorry, I was late. I had to finish dinner with my family. <laughs> So um, how's it going, Matthew? Apparently not so well. <laughs> no. All right, that's the agenda. And I'm clicking ask to unmute on Matthew. Oop. So I'm unmuted again, but uh, again, it's not showing. Um, Matthew, can you see us and we can't, we just can't see you? No, I, I can't. Uh, I can't see you guys either. Oh, and guys, it said she was going to be late too today. That's right.
Well, it seems like I can be on audio. Um, I just won't be able to, to see anyone or see uh, any presentations that are made. Oh, that is, um, is there, do you know if it would be, be easier if you hopped in on your phone or I? Yeah, I'm trying to figure that out um, as we speak. I'm trying to um, come up with another way of getting on. Hi, Sid. Hello. Sorry, I'm late. Oh, no problem. We um, haven't quite. I'm echoing really bad. I don't know why. Do you hear that? Yes. Nope. I cannot. It's you, Sid. Yeah, I hear it. I can totally hear it. It's Sid. Yes, it was Sid. <laughs> It was said. Oh, here we are. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, Matthew, can you hear and see us? I, I can. can. Ah, it's well, not echoing. Echoing. What is that? You're sorry, it might be. Hold on, let me cancel, cancel. my. Yeah, because you have two windows open, I think, Matthew. All right, is that better? Yes. Better. Okay. All right. One second.
All right. Um, I think I'm just gonna have to use the regular stuff here. All right. So uh, who do we have on? Who do we have on? Let me see, I'm changing the view so I can see who, who is with us. Okay. Uh, so I- it's, it's so stressful when your technology doesn't work. I'm... Yes. I can't. Yeah. All right. Um, but it looks like we've got, uh, we've got four uh, attendees as well as uh, the uh, the participants, and so uh, we can we can start our conversation. This is great. All right. Um, so I, I can't imagine that we would want to add anything to the agenda, um, which currently looks a bit over ambitious. But um, were there, uh, was there anything else that uh, we needed to add to the agenda? All right. Um, hearing no request for that, um, I was not in attendance at our last meeting. Um, I know that there is a, uh, we have minutes from that meeting. Uh, is there a, motion to approve the meeting minutes from our October 15th, 2020 meeting. So moved. Second. I second. I second the motion. All right, all in favor? Aye. All right, the motion carries. Great. Um, so I think what I'd like to do is um, if we have people who are here uh, for our public comment, if we can take that for a few minutes, uh, we'd like to start with that. Um, although I just wanna say it's great to see everybody and I hope everybody's doing well. Okay, um, so if you are a participant an attendee, um, and you'd like to speak during public comment. Um, I don't know if you need to raise your hand or, or how we're doing that, but if you could do that, it would be great. And that way we can hear from you. Okay. They, so they do need to raise their hand if they're a per attendee and they want to participate. And I just also have to give out that warning that this is meeting is being recorded. Yes. I don't know that we have, I think everybody that is in our attendee list is from the um, League of Women Voters. Okay. Um, Deb, uh, did you know if uh, you had mentioned someone else who was planning on speaking during public comment about reparations, are they able to come? I thought she was gonna be here. She is not here. I don't see her in the attendees list, so. Okay. All right. Um, then I think what we should do, because we're um, running behind largely uh, based on my technological ineptitude. Um, so I would love us to, um, for now, move on because we've got uh, a lot on our agenda. And our first uh, item, Oh, we can't, I can't hear you, Matthew. Muted. I don't think he's muted. Sorry, switching devices. So I was saying uh, that the first item on our agenda is meeting our human resources uh, director. So Donna Ray, if you'd like to introduce yourself. No, you're muted. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, my name is Donna Ray Keneally. 
and I am the new HR director for the town of Amherst. I started on October 26, so still pretty brand new. Um, I, I've started to read through your mission and bylaws, and I'm very happy to be here and to learn more about the Human Rights Commission. Thank you. And I and I work kind of with Matthew before I came to the town of Amherst, not very closely, but I worked for Western New England University and Matthew also works there. He's a professor. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, so um, you know, if we could quickly introduce ourselves, I guess. Um, Don Ray, you know me. Um, uh, if, if we're going through, you, you know Jennifer Moisten, I, I assume. Um, <laughs> uh, Deb, you're, you're next. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yep. Hi, Donna Ray. Uh, my name is Deb Neubauer. I'm going into my second year as a commissioner. So it's nice to meet you. Great to meet you. Uh, Erica? Hi, I'm Erica. I'm new to the commission as of this summer. Nice to meet you. Great to meet you. Thank you. Uh, ben. Yeah, I'm Ben. I'm on my second year, I think. Something like that. Second, 16th, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Great to meet you. Thank you. Uh, Cedric. Hey, how are you doing? I'm Cedric. Uh, it's my first year. So nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you too. Thank you. Uh, Sid? Hello, Sid Ferreira. This is my, I believe, fifth or sixth year, uh, second, second go around. Um, I'm also on the Housing Trust. Um, um, housing Trust. Excellent. Group. Great yeah. to meet you. Thank you. Good to meet you, too. Gazit Chaya? Hi, I'm Gazit Chaya Nikosi. This is Sid my second, uh, second year. Nice to meet you. And Petua. Hi, I'm Petua. Um, and I think this is my second year too. Um, I'm a student at the high school. So. Wonderful, great to meet you. Great, so uh, this is the commission. We have historically um, uh, worked occasionally with the, the human resources director. There was an overlap as you are probably now aware for a while between the human resources and human rights director. Um, I believe that we are um, trying to figure out how to uh, make that work out uh, so that the human resources director is able to do the human resources job um, and to make sure that we also have um, a focus on human rights and, and we figure out the best way of doing that uh, with the town. That sounds great to me, and I'm, you know, definitely willing to pitch in and help in any way I can. Great. Well, thank you. Thanks. All right. Um, so uh, the next step for us is um, we wanted to have a discussion with the League of Women Voters Racial Equity and Justice Task Force. Um, there are a number of participants. Uh, attendees from the League of Women Voters, and I believe that uh, that one of them, Ash Hartwell, asked whether he would be able to share his screen when they gave their presentation to us. So I'm going to make them all panelists for the for their presentation, so that we can see, and um, then they have all the ability capabilities of. Okay, so that should be everyone. That's great. And now, Ash, do you have the ability to share your screen now? I think I probably do. Thank you. Okay, that was perfect. Technical wizardry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just to introduce us all, I think uh, uh, Andrea Battle, uh, we're all with the uh, 
with the Racial Justice Task Force for the League of Women Voters. And there's Martha Hanner and Adrian Terezi. Hi, Adrian. Adrian. And uh, so <clears throat> the reason we came to you is because uh, when the Social Justice Task Force uh, got started, we asked the question of um, how, how can we be a supporting how can we support the work of the town to move forward on the issues of racial equity and justice? Um, and rather than be a leader, how can, we, how can we be a supporter? And how can we, to you, to the Human Rights Commission, how could, how could we be of help? And uh, Andrea, maybe I'll have you say a few words about it because you, you've inspired us with your words on this. Uh, yes, um, one of the reasons that I have been trying to get away from doing so much and join the task force, um, I've been a member of the league for a while, but this task force, I liked the way we approached it. Um, it was a task force to listen to groups who are trying to help things happen in the town and various um, aspects. And the idea of listening and maybe supporting some of those groups and doing what we can to foster um, better relations, to promote, and to really just be very helpful, not leading, but listening and promoting is what appealed to me. Um, and, and the work that um, Ash and Martha actually did on research is just one of the beginning things that we've done. And I'm going to give it back to Ash. I just want to say, you know, thank you for having us and so quickly and we're going to get on with the presentation, but I just want you to understand this is about helping and providing our name for a positive thing for whatever you're trying to do also. Thank right. you. And also we're very aware that we have 10 minutes. <laughs> so we're, we're going to try to do what we can. Um, I wanted to say that what we, what we undertook here was very modest. Uh, it was to say what public information is available to uh, inform public discourse and dialogue around racial justice and equity. What, what, what would people be able to turn to to say, what can we know about this for Amherst? We know that there are lots and lots of personal stories and lots and lots of um, uh, uh, events and things that we can turn to, but what's the information say? So that was a very simple question. Uh, so we set out to, to try to find that out and I'm gonna share my screen. Um, whoop, just a moment. Gotta be careful which button you hit, you know? <laughs> um, And this is a very short slide, by the way. This is, <laughs> um, so the questions we ask is, so what public information exists that will help us on racial equity and justice? And then where did we look? Well, we, we asked some informants and thank you both Matthew and Jennifer because you were informants. <laughs> but uh, we, we wanted to look at it systemically rather than just at the issue of the day, which was security and policing. So we wanted to look at, so what's available about jobs, about uh, income, about housing, health, education, policing, and town government. Those are the areas. And basically to say what we found was that um, it's perfectly evident that what little information is available shows that racial inequality and gaps definitely exist. But almost all the public information sites don't actually tell us uh, what, what the status is by racial groups. Um, and we, we found in, and in our report, which I think all of you um, should, should have, we can give that to everybody here on the, on the commission. Um, we found 14 public sites which were of use, but none of them broke it down by race and down to the level of Amherst. A lot of them were regional. Um, and excuse me, I want to go back. So we did from this, we did from this come up with some recommendations, and that's what we really want to focus on here. 
Um, we, we've looked at all of these sites and actually have linked all of them to you so that anybody who's interested to see what they say can go there and, and, and take a look. But it's mostly, as I said, it's, um, it's, it's disappointing um, for a variety of reasons. One of the biggest challenges was that most of the data that's available conflates the university population that live in the town um, and at the university with the um, non-student residents. And so if you ask a question like income, you find that it's quite distorted because students don't make much money. <laughs> but you can't really tell what is the situation for non the non-student residents. This isn't to say students aren't very important within the town, but it, it, it's hard to get a full picture of the situation of those who are, are, are not students. In fact, it's, it's just about impossible. Um, and so that, there are other issues as well, but that was m the, the biggest problem that we faced. Um, and as I said, we did find that when we looked at things like family income, which wouldn't apply so much to students, um, although some students obviously are in family, um, we see that the gaps are absolutely very real. Two and a half times um, the income level for the black family uh, for, the, for the white family. So these gaps do exist. We, we have no doubt about that. Um, so if somebody said to us, well, is this really a problem? It definitely is a problem. Um, and it's true in health and it's true in other areas. Another thing, and Matthew brought this up to us actually early on, and that is the, the whole process of identification of racial identity is, 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 is problematic. Um, because it changes over time. Um, and it now is mostly self-disclosure, which is fine, but many people change, depending on who asks, <laughs> will change the response. And so that also makes it somewhat difficult to um, unpack the um, real situation in terms of racial equity and justice. But here's what we found, and I'm making this very brief. For the most part, sources of key indicators um, in the areas that we searched um, don't provide data analyzed by racial categories in Amherst. Um, uh, one example is the police department posts a summary on its website of call-in arrest logs, but none of that information is provided by racial identity so that we can't find um, any information that supports what is personal experience of BIPOC people of racial bias. And, and, and that makes it really difficult to address this. Um, and just a moment. Um, so we found that there's really a notable lack of public information on racial equity for employment, housing, health, policing, justice, and town government. Um, the one area where we did find um, that it was available was in education, but that was available at the state level because it's mandated by the state that um, areas of attendance and discipline and performance are um, analyzed and provided by, by race. But otherwise, um, by and large, it's not there. And we think that's a reflection also on the, the town's, how to put it, of focus on this or lack of focus um, as, as a town government. So, but we're not, we're not really interested just in the critique, what we're really interested in seeing, so what can we do to move this forward? And one thing we recognize is that um, data don't change anything. Um, it's only when the town has a commitment to change and uses data to support that, that, um, the data make a difference. So it's no sense going off and trying to gather a lot of data unless there's a strong commitment to, um, to actually use it. Um, but we do think that, um, that we would need good information if the town itself set out to have a plan to do something about systemic racism. And uh, until it can acquire good information on these issues, um, it's, it's gonna be impeded. Now, 
<clears throat> we have a set of nine specific action steps in the full report, but we'd like to highlight kind of what we can do in the short term, because this is a big, this is a big project. Um, and it's not the League of Women Voters that would do it. It, it, it has to be um, undertaken by the, by the town government um, and, and group, other groups. But um, we really think that racial identity should be recorded for all police interactions. And we suspect that that data may be available, but isn't made public, but we don't know. Um, another area which is pretty straightforward be um, records of ethnic uh, and racial diversity among town employees uh, should be made available um, to the public. Now, to be clear, in the public schools, that data is available, but not in other areas. And uh, so I'm gonna stop there because we're very aware of um, the time limits and I hope I haven't exceeded it because we really wanted to get some uh, feedback from you and uh, also I'm going to ask Martha or Adrian or <clears throat> Andrea if they'd like to, I, I'm sure I've missed something because I've done this very quickly. Yes, I, this is Martha and I'd like to uh, add one thing regarding the uh, documentation for um, the police reports. Uh, a website something that we did not include in the report because it really didn't say anything about Amherst was that Stanford University uh, did sort of a national study of various uh, state and city police departments looking specifically at traffic stops and uh, the, the, the racial or ethnic identity and so on. Uh, you know, no surprise to discover that they documented that indeed um, people of color were more often stopped uh, and traffic stops. But what I liked was on their website uh, where they listed data, uh, they made the point that many police departments don't make very full documentation. And they listed 14 points that they felt should be included in any complete uh, police report for each traffic stop. Uh, and so we did share that with Paul Bachelman and asked him to discuss it with our police department because we felt it was important uh, that the police department then get in the habit of, of recording all those 14 points as they document uh, each traffic stop and other similar types of incidents. So if you folks are interested, we could send you the link to that study, but we have given it uh, to Paul Bachelman. Gazit Chaya. Yeah, thank you all for presenting all of that. I just wanted to mention that when um, a few of us spoke with the chief um, earlier this year, uh, he did mention, I believe, that the racial identity is recorded and that it's submitted, um, I want to say, once a year to the state. So that may be something that you can request uh, directly from the chief at least worth sending an email because I, I'm pretty sure I remember him saying that that's something that they do and that there's no um, there's no review of that and there's no sort of process of mm -hmm. going through that and deciding what that information means, but that it is submitted to the state. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, we do suspect that that's true um, <laughs> from other sources too, but that, um, that what we're really interested here is, is uh, seeing how this kind of data could be made available to the public rather easily so that the public can use it for discourse and analysis so that so that we have something that uh, helps to inform um, the discussions on on race equity and justice rather than uh, because I suspect there's lots of places where some of this data may be available but it's not open to the public easily. Um, I, I would just add though that one difficulty uh, with the data is uh, when police officers, for example, uh, pull you over and they uh, mark down your your um, your background. Their it's their guess as to what your background is, um, yeah. and so that gets reported. They don't ask, 
they don't feel comfortable asking. I've, I've asked, you know, why don't you check with the person to confirm the information is correct? Uh, and, and they don't do that. And instead, uh, you know, so uh, I, I will say that the couple of times that I've been stopped, uh, I haven't looked too closely at the time. I've driven off um, and, and thought like, um, I'm gonna deal with this later. Uh, and then looked at it and saw that I was not described accurately uh, in the data that was collected by the police department. So um, I, I don't, it's, it's good to have processes by which we uh, gather information, uh, but the information is only as good as whatever our processes actually are and whether they work. Uh, so that's just something to think about for however we're gonna collect data that we can use and, uh, and then analyze or allow the public to analyze as well. And we do state specifically in our report relevant to that, to that very description that uh, we believe that the person who is cited has a right to see what was recorded for the racial data and has the right to either confirm or change it. I, I, I'm sure this would brings up some kind of, of of issues, but but that does seem to be a, a definite problem that does need to be addressed. Jennifer. Yep. So I think we spoke about this when you presented to Paul too, but for the employee purposes too, we cannot require them to complete that. So I just feel like you would receive in not valid data basically because not all the employees complete that and I don't believe that we can ask them Donna well there the information is gathered in the i9 so I think there's other ways that I think that we can get information uh, in the i9 there's a in the, I think it's in the i9 uh, hmm? well we can check the into quarry. it yeah okay let's check into it Um, I was I was wondering um, if you had any data relating to like home ownership and race. Did you find anything about like I, I don't know if I missed it, but like is did you guys do a little bit of? Yeah, that's about a really that? good question because um, residents and and where you live and how you live is is really important. And uh, we <clears throat> we searched, we really searched, and we found some information, but it was really incomplete and it wasn't broken out by racial group, it was ro broken out by poverty level or wealth level. <clears throat> and, um, but it's very clear in Amherst that that's a very key issue. I mean, the, the degree of difficulty of Amherst uh, in terms of its housing is historically redlined very clearly and only in the 60s did that change. So this is a really important issue, but we couldn't get the data. <laughs> <laughs> Did you all find any examples of strategic plans in other cities or towns similar to Amherst that you think were good models? Yes. Um, <clears throat> there's something called the um, GARE, <clears throat> and it's a, it's a national organization which helps towns do this, do precisely this. Uh, including developing plans and using data. And uh, Jennifer, you know they, that Amherst has now become a member of that, a due member. Uh, but there are lots of examples in the country of towns that have moved um, to do this and do it uh, well, and, and some that have been doing it for quite some time. Most of them are larger than Amherst, um, but, but there's some good examples of it. And uh, that that is a very rich uh, site in terms of providing uh, guidance and, and not just about the data, but actually doing something with the data, making plans and, and, and taking them seriously. <clears throat> well, it sounds like if we were able to gather data and work with it, um, it would be similar to the school system uh, trying to work with MSAN, you know, the Minority Student uh, Achievement Network, um, and you know, us as a community and as a town trying to find methods to um, 
to recognize where there are disparities and to see what the reasons are in the first instance, and then to um, act on that to limit those disparities and to, and to make things work a little bit better. I think that's been the in intent. Um, you know, uh, Ash, when I spoke with you previously, I think I mentioned, uh, you know, as a town, I think we've got a consent decree uh, with the NAACP going back to 77 on educational issues. Right. Um, a, a consent decree that asks for things that uh, would work within the school system that, um, you know, didn't end up working out the way that the consent decree intended and, uh, and the definitions of the people who would be affected by it have, have shifted over time. So uh, it, it does make it a little bit tricky to figure out um, when, when, even when we do think we're on the right path and uh, we have a number of well-meaning people, it is certainly not easy to move forward with consistency uh, if, we, if we take our eye off the ball for just a little bit. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's great to have a starting point though on, on data collection and, and see that there's a lot of communication that uh, we're looking to have. And I think there's a lot of people in town who are looking to uh, see what that information might show so we can act on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Good. Andrea? You, you are gonna get, you, I'm assuming we're going to give them the whole report because it does go into a little bit about housing and, and the committees that are, 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 you know, in other words, we've gone into more, we're just giving the emphasis of the things that we think that can be changed or corrected in a short term. But there's, there is a lot of uh, stuff that we at least found parts of, um, Ash, you know, we just didn't have enough time to present the whole report. But I think that the uh, committee should get the whole report. Uh, I, I, I believe we have the 11 page report. Um, so we, we do have that. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't have perfect recall of it, but I, I have taken a look at it and, uh, and I appreciate uh, the work that was, was done to, um, to gather information and to talk about some of the difficulties even in, in gathering the information. So I thought that that was, that was well done. And, and again, it's at least a, a good starting point uh, for conversation. Gazit mm -hmm. Haya. I'm wondering, it sounds like you all met with Paul, is that correct? That's right. And so um, I don't know much about the GARE, but um, is the GARE, like is our town's involvement with them moving us towards developing a strategic plan? Um, did you get a response about your recommendations in terms of if there's going to be movement towards that? Um, yeah, <clears throat> the, uh, it, was, it was a good conversation um, and he recognized the, 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 the challenges. Uh, Jennifer was in that meeting as well. Um, <clears throat> and and uh, he, we didn't actually get into the GARE uh, membership, but that is the focus of GARE is for the town to develop a strategic plan and and get the data to support it. Um, and, and in doing that, to be sure that you do it with a process that is really engaging um, all the important voices that need to be heard. Um, and at this point, our our strategy is, is not so much like go right to the council and so forth, but to talk to various groups about these findings and to get a better understanding of what the town does and doesn't have and, and how it might be important to think deeply about some of the issues like the one you raised, Matthew, about the actual data that does exist. You know, what are the indicators that are most important to people? What are the ways in which you can actually uh, improve what we've got because we we don't have much. So that's a too brief answer, I think. <laughs> but but um, at this point, we're really looking to inform different groups who are concerned about racial justice and equity in the town to, um, to on these findings and to see how we could collectively. Um, 
do something of, of, of use and getting started. And that's why we wanted to do the short term, you know, what can we do next month? <laughs> Matthew, you're muted. <clears throat> Sorry, I was saying uh, Adrian uh, and I think Sid and Jennifer both wanted to uh, say something as well. So hello, everyone. Um, thank you, Matthew. I'll be very brief. Uh, yes, I am um, a League of Women Voters member for many decades, and um, but I appear here if I can in my dual role as a 50 plus year resident of Amherst um, for me the heart of the data that Ash and Martha have presented on behalf of the League for the Racial Justice Task Force is the foundational guide. And I always turn to the Human Rights Commission. Yes, we have many groups represented in town and certainly over my 50 years, the uh, interest and the intent and the motivation for equity and justice for all has permeated much of what we've done, but I think this is the moment to capture. And Matthew, uh, I feel that the Human Rights Commission, you and your group are our connection as one organization to another. Yes, we have many. Jennifer is here representing the town and certainly we need the town and we need all of the organizations. But if there's one group that I look to, to support, it certainly is the, the resident on the Human Rights Commission because you represent all of us. So thank you for giving us this time tonight. I know it's a uh, other group, so I'll just end there. So thank you. I hope this is not yet another study that lands on a shelf. I've been in town long enough to know, and as a participant in many of those studies, this is a worthy study. It doesn't belong on a shelf. It needs to go forward with additional data and the contribution of the many groups that support what it is we're all about. So with that, I say thank you so much for having us. Thank you, Sid. Well, yeah, th thank you for saying that. But uh, I just had one quick question. When you guys met with the uh, uh, with the town administrator, did, did he uh, made any commitments to do any type of assessment? I mean, we do know who our students are. We do know who our residents are, right? Um, at UMass, we know exactly who our students are and we'll be able to assess all of them and send assessment, assessments every semester. Um, did he make any commitments um, of doing the same thing for our town residents to assess, you know, all of these areas that you guys have studied and found that there wasn't a lot of information available to be able to really draw a conclusion. I wish we could say that he said, yes, we're going to move on that. <laughs> I think he, he took most interest in what we had to say about the policing. And I think he'd be supportive. And I think that probably the safety committee that's now partly appointed uh, may be able to move on that. But great question, Sid. I, I, he, he was. He he kind of was very open, but he didn't he didn't yeah. commit. To that. Yeah, I mean, the policing is great, as we all know, it has to be. But there's a lot of intersectionalities with that, right? So um, you can't just do it separately from a bunch of other. And I know you know that. So and that's why I, I think, to a certain extent, we have to ask those questions of of a, of a town manager to to make sure that you know an accurate study and an accurate assessment is done um, yeah. so that we can have real data that we can then um, go from. Yeah. yeah, it's very helpful to see that these are all interrelated and interlocked. Correct. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for your work. Appreciate you. Uh, and have, have you guys uh, from the league made a presentation to the town council as well with regard to this? Shall Not I, yet. Andrea, do you want to speak to that? Or, or Martha? I think people are talking to individuals, yes. um, but considering um, there was a reception that we were concerned about when um, some of the people who were with the Racial uh, Equity Task Force uh, was presented, it was questioned whether they spoke for uh, the BIPOC population and, and that kind of thing. And so we didn't want to 
we would like to just help people and back up and, and lend our name and our force of people uh, to various groups like yours, like the racial, we wanna help people. We don't wanna get into it because you all don't want me at the town council meeting. And that didn't say that. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying, I'm, be, I'm being careful, okay? Because I, I'm a New Yorker for by, by, by birth and I will get ugly. So I don't wanna do that. I wanna make things better. So um, that's why we're trusting on, on groups that have developed and really improved, in my opinion, since I've been here for 10 years, have improved tremendously. And this is one of the commissions that, you know, the, I, I have faith in actually being able to work with or at least support, et cetera. But no, we haven't actually presented. We're talking to individuals, so. And yeah, we, we really feel that it's important not to go right away to the council. Um, the, the issues of the relationship of the council to the BIPOC population in this town is pretty serious. And uh, we don't want to get involved. We, we, we'd like the dialogue to take place that informs more people about the situation and, 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 and to get it moving it that way. And that seems also a, an appropriate role for the league. That's great. And, you know, bringing it here, I, I know I'm from Brooklyn, and so we're incredibly <laughs> polite in Brooklyn. That's, that's what we're right. known for. Uh, uh, Jennifer. I just wanted to follow up on a couple of things. Is Geisy, are you still there? She asked about the town manager's um, uh, what he was going to do with the GARE program. Okay. Yeah, and so right now the GARE program is, is well, there's a core equity team that is um, in formed, has formed in town, which is uh, just staff right now. And are, you know, we're hoping to help educate and A, come up with a strategic plan using GARE, and then also just to help promote an inclusion and create inclusion within town starting up all the way down. Um, and then I wanted to follow up the community safety working group had their first meeting today. It was the meeting that I just came from actually. So oh, I just wanted to follow up with that. And, um, you know, it would be nice if maybe if you guys wanted to um, present to them as well at a later date. Yeah, great. Thank you. That's good. All right. Um, well, thank you again. I think <laughs> this is the start of a conversation. It's definitely not the end of a conversation. So <laughs> let's let's not leave it there. But um, but let's leave it there for tonight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And we'll make sure. Should we, Matthew? Can you get the report to everybody on the commission? Yes, we've sent it out um, to everyone on the commission, but um, you know we will make sure that we're able to have a more in-depth conversation about it at, at a later time. Okay. Okay. Well, we're here to help or support whatever you want to do with us. Yep. Well, thank you. 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 Thank very you much. for your time. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Um, speaking of other other groups in town, was anyone able to go to the um, uh, the People's Assembly of the Racial Equity Task Force on uh, Sunday afternoon? I, I was not able to go. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, Several so, of us. <laughs> uh, I just have to move Andrea and Adrian back into yes. the, yeah. and I just okay. want to give them the warning so I don't just like, put, yes. you know, mid sentence. <laughs> Waiting for it, Jennifer. <laughs> okay. All right. So it, it seems like we may not have had a uh, presence from the commission on Sunday afternoon uh, for that. Um, and, you know, I'm, I, I am sure that it would be worthwhile to, to think through what the concerns are of the
the uh, racial equity task force and so maybe we can arrange uh to hear uh from from people who can speak uh from that communication uh with that group uh for tonight i guess i i want us to go through some of the other town responses to uh to inequities that that we see occurring right now um as jennifer mentioned already uh so looking at the uh the agenda uh, action and discussion items were at D1. Um, so uh, Sid and I have been members of the um, the selection committee for the community safety uh, working group. The process has been ongoing um, and uh, we've seen some really wonderful people come through and uh, the town manager is working to uh, make sure that there's a group of people who can work together um, again that group is working specifically on a shift in community safety uh, as we've discussed at uh, the meeting before last and it therefore is looking at the history of policing and the activities that police officers have done in the town of Amherst um, and what other kind of social responses we can have as a town so um, that's ongoing and I haven't heard yet about their their first meeting tonight but i'm glad that that's starting up uh, they have a report due in uh january uh to the town manager and the town manager i think has to give that report uh to the town council at that point and they'll have another uh either they or another group will have a report in june of 2021 so um again through the town manager's office so uh, i just want to let the commission know that that process is ongoing uh, and that those meetings uh, began apparently at four o'clock today. Jennifer, is that right? Yes. So um, so for people like Jennifer who are uh, going from meeting to meeting to meeting, um, they're probably all blending together a bit, but, uh, but at least that that's also starting up. Uh, there was also a vote, um, last uh, about two weeks ago from the town council, I think on the wage and tip theft bylaw, it recognizes a report uh, that would be given on a, a biannual uh, basis. I, I think it's a meeting on a biannual basis with uh, the, no, it's a report on a biannual basis by the town uh, with regard to how it's responding to um, complaints about wage uh, and tip theft. Um, often this is again in situations where people are uh, are either day laborers uh, in construction or something along the lines of that or uh, tip theft in uh, service industries where a large component of pay is actually through tips. Um, so that is um, we'll have a component of the Human Rights Commission working with the town manager on uh, an annual report on how the town is responding uh, to complaints. Although again, I think it's meetings every other year uh, with the, um, the uh, attorney general's office on, on uh, how the town is responding to that. Um, one other thing that I wanted to report on uh, was the uh, a couple of town councilors have reached out with regard to a town surveillance uh, review. Uh, so we sent around the the draft of a, um, a town surveillance review document, which would look to whenever the town buys equipment uh, that would be used to um, surveil the population in some way, whether it's um, and there's a list of what's included and what's not included. Uh, but it's it's really looking at things like um, if if you have something external um, to in what might be an area that is viewed as having a greater likelihood of crime or something like that, um, would the uh, I, I think that the hope is that there'd be someone um, working with the town manager to report on concerns that we might have as a town for the residents of the town. Uh, 
the question was whether this was something that the Human Rights Commission should be involved in um, in the first instance, or if it's something that something like the uh, the community safety working group, if it ends up trying to make a determination of who else in town should be considering these issues, uh, whether they should be uh, helping to make that determination of who would look at at that. Um, I, when I was approached about it, I did say that one of the concerns I have is whoever needs to know the technology, um, you know, needs time. Uh, that if it requires gaining some expertise, there's a question of whether we want commissions that have people rolling off, um, you know, one third every year. Whether we want different voices on. Um, so I think there's more to to think about with that. Uh, but I wanted to hear from you all and to see whether this is the type of thing we think uh, is the role that we want the Human Rights Commission to uh, be further involved in or whether we think that there should be um, another town body that is considering things like surveillance and, uh, and the role of the town investing in things that will um, keep an eye on what's happening in our communities um and be aware that there should be concerns about some communities being over policed and overwatched uh and and uh making sure that whoever is part of that discussion is speaking for the voices of those who historically have been um watched more and policed more uh are there any thoughts on on that uh, town surveillance review and what involvement the Human Rights Commission should have. Petua. Uh, why, why is the town investing in surveillance in general? Is there a reason or is it just because we want to do that? I don't have any information that the town is currently considering an investment uh, in surveillance. There, there's actually a budget meeting that started i think at six o'clock tonight uh for the town council budget forum um so i'm not entirely sure what is being uh considered in the town's budget and what the benefits what the perceived benefits might be to investing in some type of surveillance technology i can say that when i was serving on town meeting and we put up more of these um and I only served for a few years, but uh, one of the things that occurred while I was serving on there was uh, more of the stoplight cameras. And the idea is that they're helping with traffic flow. The concern that a lot of people had was, is this something where you're gonna be able to see license plates? Uh, is this something that's gonna be used to track people who are, um, that the police are looking for? Uh, is information gonna go into a database that would be shared with other law enforcement. There were a lot of questions that were asked. Um, the police chief at that point said, that's not the intent. This is all about um, making sure that traffic flows more smoothly. We would need a different kind of approval if we were looking for something else and we don't foresee ourselves looking for something else. I don't know whether there's been a change and uh, now that, that we have a town council, uh, the, the decisions might be able to be made a little bit more quickly, um, but, uh, but I hope that they're also going to be very thoughtful about uh, what is right for our town. Um, Sid? Let me get myself, oops, I'm messing up here. Um, I think that at, at, at the least, at the minimum, I should say, um, we should be aware of um, if the town and or the police department or any entity from the from from the town should should be thinking about investing in uh, in this type of technology because everything that I have I have read you know um, it can go left you know it really quickly um, especially when you have you know when the representative population and or targeted populations um, you know it's been used. Um, in the past and not just, I don't, I haven't read anything about in the United States, but I know outside of the United States, 
that technology has been has been used to um, bring people to prosecution. Um, you know, in, you know, uh, putting people in prison. Um, you know, violating people's rights. So for me, it is a human rights issue um, when this when this type of technology is employed um, because it can be used to violate people's human rights, right? So I think at a minimum, we need to be aware of it. Um, if there's a way that we, we can be proactive, we as in the town to say, you know, is this technology, technology going to be, you know, um, what's the name of it? Uh, we're going to look at this technology in the future. Um, how we, are we going to utilize it for these certain ways? They should be able, they should come to us first and talk to us and other entities before they make that final decision. Because this technology definitely can be used to violate people's rights, human rights. Thank you. Uh, Deb? Yeah, I, I agree with that just because it doesn't start out being used for that purpose doesn't mean that that purpose doesn't become available when they're searching for, you know, this or that person and then they use it once they roll those cameras back because they're searching for someone or something and then they that that becomes part of what they do, you know, surveillance. So I, I think this is a discussion. Why would we be in why would the town be investing in this and it does seem to me that it falls under the purview of both the public safety working group and the HRC, maybe uh, one person from each group would, you know, be participating in this discussion. So you'd recommend that if if the discussion with this were to go forward at some point, that they would seek to have members of um, of town commissions or committees that deal with some of the underlying issues. Um, as part of the group that works with the town manager uh, in responding to what those um, what surveillance technologies might be considered. Yep. Because once those cameras go on, they're filming 24 seven. You know, so um, and you know, just the, the purpose of what they're, you know, when they're when they start looking when if we roll roll that back for one reason we can roll it back, you know, roll those cameras back to see what got filmed at, you know, Saturday night at 1145. We can roll that back for multiple purposes. I don't, I don't know if I'm making myself clear, but I just have seen that at the jail, like the cameras are on all the time. They're not necessarily watching them until there's a problem. And then there's a problem and they're rolling it back and they're catching all kinds of things because those cameras are on all the time. Yeah, I think that that's that's certainly the concern that um, that over policing um, would it, it would prevent people from feeling comfortable engaging in um, either behavior that's perfectly legal but maybe might be disfavored or uh, or embarrassing or whatever it might be, or behavior that is moderately illegal. Um, and all I mean by that is behavior that. Uh, can be policed, but that we tend as a community to choose not to police. Um, but if you have it on film, then you can choose to use it or not to. And, and that shifts some of the um, expectations of what it means to be part of a community. So, um, well, again, I don't believe that the town council is, um, has moved forward with anything on this yet. It was uh, brought by a, a brought to my attention uh, by a couple of town councilors as something that they're thinking about. And uh, I think the idea of saying that we would want to designate because of um, open meeting laws, I think we would need to designate uh, one person so that uh, there wouldn't be a deliberation of the Human Rights Commission outside of a time that we have uh, set aside for a meeting. Um, but but I think that that's certainly something um, that would be helpful to have it brought back to us and to our attention. I think Liz Thanks. has her hand up. Oh, I didn't see that. I'm sorry, Liz. That's okay. Um, when we talk about surveillance, are we talking about in the neighborhoods, in town, or are we talking about police body cams, a combination of all of that? What exactly are we talking about? 
Um, I, I believe that it is a, the possibility of a combination of all of that, that the town council is uh, trying to consider if the town does invest, and this goes to Petua's earlier question too about, um, you know, is there a reason to bring it up now? And I don't have an answer for that. I'm not sure if there is something that uh, has been considered, but, um, you know, my guess is that as we're thinking about what we would like our own policing to look like, if there's a discussion about body cams or something like that, uh, do we want to have some degree of um, oversight and who would that oversight body be? I, I think that that's the, the main question. Um, if we look back at body cams over the last you know, five years since they've become more uh, in use, I think we've all seen examples of even abuse of body cams that came to, uh, came to light. So for example, the police officer, this was a few years ago, and uh, I think that there was something going around showing someone who turned on their body cam didn't realize that it goes back 30 seconds from uh, before when they hit on. So it shows them planting the drugs, walking back from where they planted the drugs. Um, then once they think the camera's on saying, oh, you know, looks like there might be something down this alley, walking down an alleyway and then finding the drugs that the camera shows that they planted, right? Um, it's, it's uh, so you can, if you know how to use the technology, the police off officer thought that they would be, and this is not in the town of Amherst, so I want to be clear on that. Uh, but, uh, you know, a, a police officer could try to abuse that. Um, and I, I think we all need to be aware that um, putting something on film doesn't necessarily make it, make it better just because we've seen what's happening. Uh, it doesn't mean that there aren't people with an editorial eye that are trying to make it look one way when it's really coming down another way. So, um, but I, I think all that we can do is respond to them at this point that we would like uh, if there is some kind of committee uh, to opine on whether someone from the Human Rights Commission could serve on that committee and be part of it. Deb? Um, that is a great question, Liz. That was something I hadn't really considered. When I was thinking of surveillance, I was thinking of like cameras in neighborhoods or at traffic lights. I wasn't thinking about body cams on police. So thank you for asking that question. That's an important distinction. I just wanted to say that in case, so I wouldn't be misunderstood. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think everyone has asked some good questions. I kind of wish I had more answers or better answers, um, but I'm just going with what I've heard thus far from, uh, from uh, two of the town councilors who are, um, are, are moving forward with this. And I, I only received an email. I haven't even had a conversation with them about it. Um, Can I just say one other thing? The thing I want us to consider is like, what is the problem that surveillance is trying to solve? So that's, I just want that question to be part of the discussion. What is the problem that we're trying to solve here? So just to frame whether we would advise to or not to go, you know, to make that investment. Yeah, and I would also add, like, considering everything that's happened this year, like, adding a budget to the, like, adding more budget to the police or to surveillance is not what, like, the climate of, like, this community is. And I feel like doing that goes directly against everything that's been going on this past couple of months. Um, so I, I'm kind of alarmed that, that the town council is um, considering this, um, even if it's not even, but, like, it just kind of concerns me that people aren't listening to what is going on in the world. So I just wanted to say that. <laughs> yeah, and I, I want to be clear that I don't know that they're that they're considering any particular type of surveillance. Um, it, it could be exploratory. Um, so if if the um, community safety um, working group ended up coming back and saying um, we would like to have fewer police officers. And one solution might be that, um, you know, there, there be cameras in the center of town so that you don't need to have 
um, people uh, in the area until something comes up, then we would have that option. I would be personally uncomfortable with that option. That's me. Um, but I haven't studied it yet. And, uh, and so I, I would want to hear why anyone would think that's a good idea. But I agree. Um, if it were putting money towards a police budget, and I think that things like body cams and those types of, of community uh, oriented cameras have historically been treated as part of a police budget. Um, that might be different than having something as part of a, um, a community safety budget that would look to, instead of having um, police officers available for, for uh, traffic, uh, easing traffic in some way, increasing the number of cameras, surveilling it, um, you know, the uh, public way in order to make things work more easily. If, if that's the argument and it has nothing to do with the policing budget or if it's diminishing the policing budget in order to shift it to something else, um, to look at areas where people would typically, uh, where people who are um, uh, housing insecure might be and making sure that on colder nights there is awareness if someone is in an area where uh, people would tend to congregate but wouldn't be safe, you know, something like that. Um, so I, I think that there's a, a lot of speculation we could do on, on what they would want to do with it. I just don't have any idea at this time. Um, so I, I uh, but I, I do think we want to continue to be part of the conversation is, is certainly what I'm hearing. Jennifer. Maybe I had to step away for a moment and maybe I missed that part, but did they say why they wanted to have it? Like, do they feel like it would be some type of safety or like, or I, like I, they, there's, we don't know enough about it yet. It's... No, I, I have, um, I sent around the draft document that, that they sent to me. Um, and, uh, and they just asked whether the, the human rights commission would want to be part of the conversation. Um, I think if they weren't having the budget forum, some one of the counselors would have come and talked to us a little bit about it tonight. Uh, but okay. because they they have that as something they have to do a few times a year, uh, and tonight was the night they scheduled it for. Uh, so that's why they're not here to explain it. So maybe we can arrange for them to uh, have a discussion with us about it, to have uh, one of the town counselors at least come and tell us what the possibilities would be for that. Um, any other questions on that? Hearing none at this time. Um, so uh, I know Jennifer has been working on the um, community outreach survey. Uh, and, uh, and I believe that there was some discussion at the last meeting of, of collecting information. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, and so I, I wanted to know if there's uh, anything else that we want to discuss around that. I will acknowledge that um, my own understanding of the, the community outreach survey is not as strong as I would like it to be, um, but that is, um, you know, more a question of just us as a, a commission trying to figure out from when we started meeting again in June, and then we uh, had a speaker come in, and before we want to have more speakers and uh, more town conversation. I think we said that we looked forward to there being more of a grassroots perspective on what we as a town need to be talking about, need to be focusing on, uh, particularly surrounding issues of, of anti-racism. Uh, and I originally did not understand the community outreach survey to be geared towards that. I thought it was in response to our July speaker um and and how uh what next steps would be but um i i think at this point we have uh had people go out to different parts of the amherst community and and seek to do something with the survey is that correct jennifer not yet no 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 one's done anything with it 
So no one's going to make a move unless we're all like, I wouldn't have everybody go do that. And half of the committee wasn't at the meeting when we discussed it. That doesn't seem like it's an ethical way to move in the commission. But so here's where we're at. So I think that it was more of trying to have ambassadors do it so that we can connect. And so what I did find out is we can get a little bit of a stipend for people who would like to be ambassadors to have this survey completed. Or and we can't call it a survey either. And there's lots of reasons why we can't call mm -hmm. it a survey, right? So we have to, it could, maybe it could be a questionnaire or a, I, I'm not quite sure it's something else to discuss. You know, part of the problem is that we're meeting once a month and then we don't get enough time to really discuss these things or, you know, on the times that we do, not everybody's here. So it's just hard to, to, to make it move. But I, I, you know, and then if we have ambassadors do it, you kind of feel like you have to train the ambassadors a little bit so that they know what they're doing when they go out into the community to represent, which then I start thinking that maybe we should have an ambassador program. Right. So it just keeps getting further and further and deeper and deeper. Right. And so um, it, it, for it to be a survey is too complicated. I'm trying to go quickly because we're coming up towards eight o'clock and there's still a few more items. I think that we can just kind of push through. So um, it can't be quite a survey because we're we can't say that it would represent the town itself because we can't get it to everybody. We're not going to get it from back from everybody if we did get it to everybody. So it has to have some other type of title. Um, but Paul is okay with having ambassadors do that. And the purpose for the ambassadors and the complexes is because they already have a connection to the people that we're trying to hear from and which we don't necessarily. And we also know that some people are, uh, feel some type of way with authority at this time and aren't as trusting. And so it's really to get the deepest, to get what we can. And it is a two-folded questionnaire at this point, right? Because it'll be on our website and I'm quite sure, and it'll go to the town councils. So I'm not as concerned with it getting to the constituents of the council and to those who are already involved in public and local government, right? It's the people that we don't hear from who are affected most by the things that are going on in Amherst that have to do with uh, any type of ism, really, right? Let's not limit it to race, but it's gender identity. It's it, it's all of it. So the idea is just to get a, a better tempo of the things that, yes, that we need to proceed to move forward with helping educate the community, right? And um, so that's where I am with that. And if any commissioners or want to work with me on that, I'm okay with that too, because I don't see how it's ever gonna get done, meaning, once a month, right? Because this is all we hear about it. And it, now we have to wait until December to have further discussion on it. And so it, if I don't know how to, to make that happen in a faster way. I tried to have a, a meeting in between and didn't get that much of a response from everybody. And so I don't know if we need to just have a group, two or three folks who we just either meet separately or somehow and, and move forward with it that way if we need a subcommittee of our committee or, or what? Well, you know, the concern I would have is, again, if, if we treat it as a subcommittee, uh, I think we still have the same open meeting laws issues that we need to kind of post that, that we're meeting. Um, yeah, but that would be fine because we could meet as much as we want or often as we needed. It's not, I mean, that's the issue isn't it being um, in violation of open meeting law. I just, we can't communicate enough once a month to get it to move is what I'm saying, right? So somehow I, we, I need a way, we need a way to connect more so that it can move somewhere is what I'm trying to say. I'm sorry, it's been a really long day. I've been yeah. in meetings, like in Zoom meetings all day long. So I don't mean to sound frustrated. I'm hungry, I'm getting <laughs> angry. Yeah. So, um, but, and and I am a little bit, feeling some kind of way about the whole survey slash questionnaire slash whatever we're going to call it at this point because you know we could have executed it 10 times by now <clears throat> what needs to still be done on it because it seemed like it was pretty well complete well so but i need a group to work behind it with the whole ambassadors and getting that that training piece and i can't just take this and and i feel like it's not my place 
to take this and just run with it. This is a part of the Human Rights Commission. So I, I need some Human Rights Commission members to work with me on it, if that makes sense. And no, this we don't have to necessarily do any adjustments to the actual survey questionnaire, whatever we're calling it itself, but the execution of it, the whole piece with the ambassadors and, and getting them paid and having them trained, that piece I would prefer to have some help or assistance with it from commissioners. If that does that answer your question, and I'm again, I'm not trying to be hostile. <laughs> I, I think it's it's great if there are um, if if there are commissioners who understand what their responsibilities would be, um, and it doesn't have to be um, if it's a town document. We can be one of the entities working with you on it, and so if we have uh, people who are um, that we, we delegate to work on, on the town document or even don't delegate, but we have volunteers that have come from the commission um, and therefore it's not us de deliberating on it, then um, it's just the town doing its business and volunteers working with the town. Uh, I'm not and trying to get wait. around open meeting law, just to be clear for, for the recording. Um, I, I'm just saying that if it's not actually um, a human rights commission document but it's something that that the town collects and town councilors collect and we're able to utilize that information then it can be whoever we want um, or whoever you want to work with uh on that yeah and so and and it seems like this is would tie along with the human rights commission and it needs to have a like a home or a group of body that it belongs to specifically so if the Human Rights Commission itself doesn't want to be involved in it, then that's okay. The only thing I'm saying is working with the other group is if I worked with two members, however we make that happen, or if we have to, you know, go by the open meeting laws so that we can just have it a plan for how we're going to handle, do the ambassador training, how they're going to get paid, how we're going to give them, how many languages we'll have, a whatever the case is, and bring that to the commission as a whole and say, here, here's our plan. We need you guys to be on board with it, yay or nay. Does that make it a little more clearer for you? Like, um, I was talking to a couple of students that I that wanted to, that were interested in becoming an ambassador, and they were just not clear about what exactly it right. would mean. Yeah, so I so, think if we could like define what an ambassador be or what the program is, I could help do that, and then we can you. like share that, and that way people can know yeah. what it is, and then we can get stuff moving. Thank and you. And on top of that, what Petra was saying is, I did speak to the two people that I was supposed to, one from Rolling Green and one from Riverside. And they are interested, want to know more about what being an ambassador is and how many, how much time they needed to put in and things like that. So I do have some people that are interested in helping move this questionnaire along. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, as, as do I, so I can also help you if if you need to, if you need and some assistance. Um, so that's two people. So I don't know that that causes an open meeting law, but I will run that by Paul just to make sure that he feels like it's it's not of an issue. Otherwise we can just post a meeting and that would be fine. That's, that's fine. So here's the other suggestion is since we keep pushing this back, pushing this back, um, I'm, Right now, our next meeting is scheduled for today's the 19th. So I would say December 17th should be our next scheduled meeting. Yes, no, maybe. Yeah. And if we can all plan to be here just for that one day for an extra half an hour just for this, maybe we can knock it out that way. Just a suggestion. Yeah. Yeah. Either one of those ways works, um, whatever you guys feel comfortable, but I need like buy-in from you guys. And then I need your assistance within that buy-in, if that makes sense, which I think I have the buy-in. I just need the assistance moving forward. I, I think it ties in a little bit with what's in a few items on the agenda, but just about like what your role is and how we have had a pattern, at least in the past year of 
discussing ideas and then you Jennifer end up and go do a bunch of work and that is why part of why I wanted to bring up like a conversation about what your role is and how we all work together because I have seen other committees um do work outside of their meeting time and um and I think it makes sense for us to participate like if we want something to happen that we should all work on it rather than just having Jennifer do it. Thank you. As, guys. as fabulous as you are, and you've Thank done you. everything really beautifully, but I, it doesn't seem like it's your role and it doesn't seem like we're living up to our roles either. Thanks. Right. So I, I, I agree that if we are going to, um, there, there should be a, a question about um, whether if we want to have some kind of, of questionnaire, for example, um, whether we, we should take ownership of that from the beginning um, or whether we should, uh, you know, try to be supportive of the town going forward and doing that. Um, so I, I, I do think that there's once someone has has uh, commenced the the work, then I think we just have to decide whether um, it's something that that we are buying into or it's something that that we are um, promoting ourselves. Uh, and so I think that those those are two slightly different things. Um, but but I think that that's that's important. And it's also important for us to recognize that um, historically, at least, part of what we've done, in between meetings too, is is be the people who um, who are showing up at at events. Who are you know? Th there's a little bit less of that um, now, uh, but as far as um, when when we know about events that are coming up that we can be part of, listening and bringing that back to the commission. Um, so that we can figure out how to be supportive of others in our community in general. Um, but it, it sounds like uh, Jennifer is correct at this point that there is a buy-in on doing a questionnaire so that we can have more of a conversation as a town of, um, on issues that are important to us and, and gathering that information, uh, working with town councilors and so on. So it seems like there's there's a way for us to move forward on this. Um, so there's two other things uh, on the agenda. Wait, Jennifer, you're, you're saying something. So now I'm confused uh, because now I don't feel like, I, I feel like it just got rolled back again somehow. So I'm, I'm just trying to like, here's my, my thought process is if somebody goes and puts all this work together and then you guys don't support it I mean like I I need to to like have a more solid foundation than um you go do all this work and then we'll tell you if we're going to support it or not I mean you guys can literally just vote on it I could happen at the next meeting as far as I'm concerned right and then that would just end that and we could just move forward from there. And I'm again, I don't mean to seem, I'm hoping I'm not coming off of super aggressive. I'm a little hangry. So I'm a little shaky. So, um, but I just, I feel like the purpose for the questionnaire really, we know we're gonna hear from a certain group of people already with it or without it, but there is are groups of people who we do not hear from and none of us have connections to them necessarily. And we need to hear from them. And the way to do that is through our ambassadors who already have those connections. And regardless of whatever we do in the HRC, at some point we need to make that connection with that those groups. Otherwise what we're doing doesn't matter, if, right? And so I just, I feel like I need a little bit either I uh, like, if you guys want to think about it for the next month and then come back and vote on it, whether or not to move forward with it, I would prefer that than to go and do the work behind it and then come back and then have it either get delayed more 
or no vote be taken or it just get 86 at all. Because then that's a lot of work for nothing. Like I have to have buy-in. I can go to the community safety working group and see if they will buy into it and do it instead. I mean, that's fine with me if that's the way we're going to go with it. But I need, I need something because it's been like four months, five months. So I, 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 for one, would be very happy at this point if what we're doing is we're collecting information on what the community wants to talk about. Um, and we are trying to figure out the priorities of our community. And we're trying to reach out to people who may not have been heard uh, historically. And that's that's the goal of this. Um, I support that. And okay. um, Let me just and take a vote and then and then yeah. I can. Move OK, do it. That way. OK, I mean, I. I, yeah. I I thought we had a sense of the committee, uh, the commission to support it, but um, I'd be happy for us uh, to vote to support that. Is there um, a motion to support uh, the, uh, Deb, I, I don't know if- We don't even know what to call it. Writing this down. <laughs> so to, to support the questionnaire that would be- motion to support the questionnaire that the HRC would support the distribution and implementation of this questionnaire community-wide. Right. Is there a second? Second. All right. All in favor? Wait, who said second? Uh, I think Ben said second. Okay. I think. Uh, yeah. All right. All, all right. So that passed unanimously. Great. Okay. Um, so uh, the, the last two things on the agenda, um, it was just a reminder that there are uh, upcoming events before our next meeting on the 17th, if, if Liz got it right, and I trust Liz, um, the, there's December 10th, uh, I believe the town council is planning on, on, um, on continuing to support our reading the Universal Declaration of Human Rights um, outside distanced. If there's any reason that it cannot be done outside and distanced, uh, that there, we'd revisit whether to do something online but that the initial plan is that we would have an event on uh, Tuesday, December 10th, I think at 6 p.m. I think that was the time that I heard from the town council. Yeah, we uh, just won't be able to advertise it because I, we're just not advertising any kind of gathering. Okay. So if we could have as many commissioners attend for that brief amount of time to read that, that would make the, the biggest impact, I think. Yeah. And if, if you want to bring people that you are already potted with or, you know, so that the, it feels a little bit bigger, but, you know, it's still safe, uh, that would be great, too. So December, December 10th is a Thursday, and it's also the beginning of Hanukkah. Mm. So um, I think that we have, we have shared uh, during Hanukkah the green before with... Uh, with Hillel, who I think has um, brought out Hanukkah, um, uh, brought out a, a large menorah. So um, I, I don't think that there's been a conflict. It, it, because uh, December 10th is uh, International Human Rights Day, we have done it on that day, okay. uh, regardless of the day of the week. Okie dokie. So, but you're right, it's a work night. It's a six o'clock and a work night and school it night. It's like a 20, 25 minute reading, right? Don't you think? Like, yep. if that even. Yep. Uh, and Brings up on Coco. What's that said? I said it's definitely quick. Especially if it's really cold, then it really goes quick. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I, I know that typically we've had a celebration of, um, of uh, MLK Day, um, and we have had commissioners um, show up as uh, at tables sponsored by the town. I have not heard of um, a shift this year. Obviously, we're we're playing a lot by ear. We're congregating where we can safely, um, but I don't know that there is a plan for um, a congregation. Um, last year, I, we had both a uh, a celebration on the town steps as well as the breakfast. Um, I, I, I just don't know what the plans are for this year. Jen. 
because the wheels are always thinking. Dun, 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 dun. I'm really hoping that we can just somehow connect with the folks who do Kwanzaa regardless and we do it virtually have Amherst Media post it for us and or even if like different people take on the seven days and somebody just reads what that seventh day means and lights the candle and we just air that through Amherst Media mm -hmm. so um, I haven't I've been like super busy so I haven't been able to quite yet check in with um, the Shabazzes and Lauren Mills about it but I will um, yikes next week um, and uh, I'm going to assume that for Black History Month and Martin Luther King's birthday, we'll still do something. It's going to be virtual, though, right? And it so, and and that's just we'll have to do it that way, which stinks because you know we get cake and good food and stuff like that. But I think we just have to keep that. I you know I'm I think we have to keep these things going to the best of our ability. Um, Keep moving forward with them. Great. Um, and so the the last thing on our agenda, um, yeah, I, again, and so that response to the recognition of Kwanzaa, which was also on, on the agenda. Um, and uh, and I suppose, you know, uh, I guess we're, we don't recognize the religious holidays. Um, all right, but uh, the last thing on our agenda was the role of uh, commissioners, chair, uh, town staff liaison. I know that um, Gazi Chaya has, uh, you know, wanted to ask about a couple of things. One, I think the ability to have uh, rotating uh, or or just different ways of having the meetings managed. And I think that, that that's certainly uh, something that we can talk about fairly quickly. Um, also, we do vote for a chair every year. Um, and we usually, we waited, I think last year was after uh, everyone who was appointed over the summer and into the early fall of last year. Um, so it was at our November 10th or 12th or whatever that was um, retreat that we uh, voted for chair. Um, so it's, it's November again, it's, it's time. Um, and so if, uh, you know, we can have a chair and a vice chair uh, so that we know that there's always the ability to have the, the meetings, someone on, on deck. And again, that person who's chair would not have to manage each meeting. Um, they can arrange with others. So there just has to be some degree of coordination and that would be the chair's responsibility. Um, so, uh, are those, or is there anyone who is interested in uh, serving as chair of the commission? Um, not that I'm interested in serving as chair, but um, I would um, thank you for that introduction. And I would like to um, nominate Ben to be chair if he would be willing. Yeah, I would. Okay. All right. Um, are there are there any other nominations? I would like to uh, nominate you, Matthew. Um, you know, to continue to be chair. You know, and if you were to accept, I don't know, because I know you've done it for a while. Yeah, I'm. You know, I. Uh, I had discussed with uh, Paul at one point, you know, he, he and I have discussed the fact that there are so many qualified people on the commission um, who could serve as chair. Um, with the types of transitions we've had, he had originally suggested and that I, I continue in the role. Um, I, I do think that there is probably something correct about changing it every couple of years, uh, at least just so that we get different perspectives uh, and, and everyone realizes that you don't get selected to the commission if you're not already a leader and, uh, and able to bring us together. So um, I, I have faith in everybody. Um, and I will probably be just a little bit less loquacious uh, when I'm not 
kind of on all the time and that might make our meetings go faster. So, so that's a benefit too. Um, so um, if, if there's someone else who is interested just out of a sense of, of, of good governance and, and my belief in all of you, I would be happy to support someone else uh, in this role. I mean, I think at this point, like it clearly needs to be voted, right? Yeah. Like, I, I don't yes. think you can just hand the torch over or not hand the torch over. I think it, you have to. Yeah, no, that's that's correct. Okay. But I just want, I'm waiting yeah, to see if sure there's no other, other nominations. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if, if uh, we would technically need to ask uh, ben to leave or something so that we could consider his candidacy, but um, I think that um, that uh, we could just call for a vote. Um, uh, all those in favor of supporting Ben as chair of the commission. So wait, can I wait, just ask hold, one quick question? Hold on. I'm sorry, can I just ask one quick no, question? Please. Are you respectfully declining continuing? If, if there's someone else who uh, feels that they are in a position to do so, um, then as a question of governance, I am happy to, um, to give space for other voices. I have another question. Yes. So does the chair pick the vice chair or is the vice chair still Sid or, well, not just Sid, but whoever, but it just happens to be Sid this time or how does that work? Uh, in theory, I believe that the uh, vice chair would also be uh, elected, not selected. Right. Correct. Yep. Okay. And I don't know that, Sid, are you officially the vice chair? Did we ever vote that or did we just say, here, Sid, <laughs> take this? I, I believe we voted that, but it was before Matthew came in. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, yeah. yeah you, I mean, if you guys are going to do chair, you should do vice chair now. Absolutely. Just... No, it's important. I think it's important to have a vice yeah. chair to tell you. I, absolutely. Um, and and just to be clear, again, the chair's uh, responsibility is making sure the um, that the agenda is set, uh, being available to. Uh, sometimes mediate situations um, that uh, it, I, and I don't know it has that it has to be the chair historically it has been the chair who um, has engaged in the mediation of issues that um, are not um, that uh, participants don't want to be on the public record and therefore don't want to bring to the the commission as a whole so um, so those are just some of the the aspects of the role Ben, are you still on board for the possibility of it? Okay, good. All right. Um, all in favor of uh, of voting for Ben for uh, chair of the commission. Great. Uh, it it looks like it's unanimous, Ben. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> yes, you can vote for yourself too. That's fine. Um, so. Uh, that means that this will be the last meeting that I am chairing. Um, I will also ask if there is uh, someone who's interested in serving as vice chair um, who will step up if the chair is unable to make it, um, would potentially be asked to uh, fill the role of chair in other circumstances if the chair can't respond to the town um, uh, on, on a short basis to help the mediation, that kind of thing. Was there someone interested in serving as vice chair? Am I on, allowed to? Am I allowed to? Because yes. I'm like a minor. <laughs> I uh, was going to ask the same thing, Petra, because I would love to nominate you. Yeah, I was, that's why I was like, Petra, yes. I mean, she is a member of the commission. I have never seen anything about age, right? To my knowledge, there's nothing about age. No. Now that said, Petua, um, um, well, it, it's for this year. It's it's through June, so yes, so that yeah, yeah. I'll be yeah. I'll still be here. Yes, June. that was my question. 
Yeah. I didn't want to put too much pressure on you. I know it's it's yeah. November senior year, so you know. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so uh, Petra, I I think that that was both a uh, self nomination and a Sid nomination. So yes. you've got your doubly <laughs> nominated. <laughs> Gazi, uh, yeah. Gazi yeah. Gazi as well. I think you would be fabulous, Petra. Okay. Um, yeah. Is I. Um, I won't opine. Um, uh, but if there's uh, if, if there are any other nominations, I, I'm happy to hear them at this point. Uh, not hearing any other nominations at this time. Uh, uh, is there uh, support for Petua as vice chair of the commission? All right. Um, this is fantastic. This is um, the, uh, I think, first kind of transition a little bit uh, in like three and a half years on the commission. So this is, uh, this is something. Um, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for the commission and I'm excited for our work. Um, and uh, I think the chair and vice chair can have, have slightly different ideas on um, how to frame things, uh, how to, how to um, handle the next meeting. But uh, the, I, I want to congratulate both of you. Uh, and uh, Gazit Haya has, has something to say, I think. Yes, thank you so much, Ben and Petra, um, for being willing. And um, I just wanted to share, I feel sad to say this, but um, I have been really trying to balance everything um, since uh, with COVID and Galileo being home and online schooling and me trying to work extra hours in the evenings um, as a result. And I, I didn't expect to get a little emotional, but I am going to need to step down Aww. and um, I really, I, I want to be like involved in it in whatever way that I can. I'm not going to disappear, but I just also know that for self-preservation um, to get through what is like not ending here <laughs> and the continued online schooling and having to manage everything that I just, um, need to take some things off my plate. So I wanted to share that this is gonna be my last meeting. Um, and it's been a, a great experience to work with you all. And I will stay in touch and um, pop into meetings if and when I can. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, for serving with the commission and, um, and contributing and um, and bringing your energy and uh, it is appreciated. I want, I'm sorry to hear that, especially for the reasons being that I'm in the schools. Um, it's really hard on a lot of people, this uh, remote yep. learning. It's hard on the kids, it's hard on the families. And I know as a teacher, which I am, it's really, really difficult. So I appreciate you as a health teacher, taking a look at um, all that is put in front of you and making the decision to take care of self and family and putting them first. And I'm mm -hmm. sorry to see that you're going. Yeah. Sid? Yeah, I, I, you know, same here, uh, does it best of luck, you know, know that, you know, speaking for myself, I'm here to help in whichever way I can. So please do that, reach out, okay? And I echo Liz's word, take care of yourself. You can't take care of no one else if you can take care of number Absolutely. one and then your family, right? So I want to do that, say that, but I also, I want to thank uh, Matthew for his years of leadership in, in the uh, Human Rights Commission. He's, he's been really an amazing leader and uh, appreciated you being there. I've seen all the work you've done, been, around you a lot of a lot of times in those swearing ins and all of this stuff and you've always been present and um you know your way of of looking at things and and uh, looking at it from both sides and and appreciated your legal your legal mind because i think that's important but at the same time you didn't always look at it from a legal perspective right um and that that makes a huge difference um in, in a group like this where 
you know, you didn't impose your views on anyone. You know, you gave your, you gave your ideas either from legal perspective of not or as the chair, but then you allowed everyone also to come in and, and put their views in and um, then come up with a consensus. So truly appreciate it, you know, these three and a half years that you were chair and, um, you know, welcome Ben. Pretty sure you'll be amazing, you and, and Petra, so Yay. thank you. Well, thanks everyone. Um, that's everything on our agenda. Uh, and so if, if there is a motion to adjourn. Can I just say one thing? Just one small, small. So I apologize for being late. I was in another meeting because they are starting up winter athletics at UMass and I do work for them wow. during the winter season. So we was in a interesting meeting about that. But if you are out holiday shopping or whatever, and you come across a gift card that you would like to donate to the family center so that we can disperse it to our um, students in need, please feel free to do so. If you have something you wanna mail, you can mail it to um, a Chestnut Street address to the family center and um, address it to Ma Dr. Marta Gravara and she will get it to the families that need it. And we're asking for gift cards for places that they can shop like Target and um, uh, Walmart where they can do food and clothing and all the things that they need in one stop. But you can also do stop and shop in other places that you might think would be um, essential for our families in need. That's all. Great. All right. Well, it's it's good to see everyone. Um, thank you all for your continued service in this time. Thank you for the service that you've provided. Um, in your time on the commission and your time with the town and and Gezi Kaya, uh, thank you again for uh, for serving on the commission. And um, a reminder that even though we're not uh, together with each other, um, we should be able to reach out to each other. And and um, you know, if anyone ever needs to reach out uh, and just have someone to, to talk to, um, I, I think we'll we'll try to make time for each other and, and try to be there. So thank you to everybody. And we forget about that. It's a hard time. Yeah, but, but there was a motion to adjourn. I forgot to, to um, yes. No, uh, can Gaizy do it? Let Gaizy do it. <laughs> yes, come on, Gaizy. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> oh, moved. All right, all right. Uh, all in favor, I think it's I, 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 but I. Uh, all right. Take All right. Care, Thanks. Everybody. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Gotta figure out how to leave this thing. <laughs> we can hear you, Liz. Oh, <laughs>